And we're back. What's up, everyone? I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, where we cover all things Swift and Swift UI related. And in this video, we're going to look at the new button styles that Apple has provided us uh, in iOS 15 for Swift UI. Now, if you've been following my channel, I did cover a custom button styles video in the advanced bootcamp playlist. And the button styles that we looked at in there were much more functionality based. So it was when you're clicking on a button, is that button going to uh, shrink a little bit or is it going to move or is it going to change its opacity? And, and that's great. That's really cool. I think it's still crucial to have in our apps. But these button styles are a little bit different. These button styles are basically giving us a pre-made background to the button. So the same way that we can go and add a frame and add a background and add a corner radius, uh, Apple is giving us like a preset version of that for our buttons. So in this video, we're gonna check out some of these preset versions. There's like four or five that we get. And we're also gonna look at this new modifier called control size, where we can actually just size these buttons automatically uh, instead of having to like set the frame and the width ourselves. Uh, as you're going to see in the video, these new styles are awesome. Definitely should use them sometimes, but in a lot of situations, you're still going to probably want to design your own buttons. So let's take a look. All right, we are working our way through these iOS 15 updates. I got another one for you guys. This is a relatively easy one as well, uh, but let's right click the navigator, create a new file. It'll be a Swift UI view, and let's call this one Button Styles Bootcamp. Let's click create. Uh, let's click resume on the canvas here. And way back when in this playlist, we covered buttons. And if I look at that buttons bootcamp quickly, and I look at some of the code in here, uh, we learned how to use buttons. And then we styled a bunch of different buttons that you can see on the screen here. And most of the time, you're still going to want to customize and style your own buttons, right? Because we can get really specific. If you're in a professional app and you have a UI designer, they're probably going to have a very specific way they want their buttons. But in iOS 15, Apple has given us some handy modifiers to basically style our buttons automatically. So I'm going to go back to our button styles bootcamp here. Let's create a V stack to put a button on the screen, open the parentheses. I'm just going to use the, let's use the title and action. So I'm just going to put um, button title, press action. We don't actually even need an action here. So we have a button title and this is how buttons look by default. The color is blue because that's the accent color of our app by default. All right, let's give this a frame with a height of maybe 55, a frame with a max width of infinity. Let's give it a font of headline. And on the whole V stack, let's just add some padding. Cool. And on this button, we can add a button style. And we're going to use this new button style completion here. So if I press the period in the button style, we should get this. We can use the automatic, which is what it defaulted to, which we can see now, but we can also use bordered, plain, borderless, prominent, or borderless. Start with the plain. Plain is just going to take the accent color basically off of the button. Nothing fancy here, except we just have the regular button title. So now we don't need to change the button titles back to a font color. We could just set them as plain. Uh, that would work. I'm going to copy this button and paste it down here. Let's paste it four times, three times. On the second one, let's do dot bordered. On the third one, well, let's do dot bordered prominent. And then the fourth one, let's do dot borderless. All right, so we can see the four types that Apple's now giving us. We have our plain which takes away all of our accent colors. We have our bordered version, which has our blue accent color and then a secondary background. That background is based on the system environment. So if the phone is in light mode or dark mode, that should change. Uh, we have the bordered prominent, which is probably the best one here. Um, we got the accent color is actually the background and then we have a white text. And then the fourth one is the borderless, which is our basically our default automatic version, which is just the accent color as the text. Just to show you guys that these are using the accent color, if we go to our assets folder and we change the accent color for our app, 
I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna open up the inspector here and let's show the color panel and let's just make our accent color, I don't know, this red. Let's do this orange, why not? And I come back to my app and I will have to command shift K to clean and rebuild. And I'll click resume on the canvas one more time. Now we should see that our buttons have updated to our new accent color. So uh, it was that easy. We just changed the accent color for the whole app and then we can get these perfect buttons. Uh, these cover a lot of use cases. Obviously a lot of times you're gonna wanna still make your own. And finally, let's click on this little icon here at the top. Let's change our app into dark mode and we should see that these styles have also updated for dark mode, which is again, super handy. Even the gray on the background of this uh, bordered one, it's a slightly different gray because that gray is adapting based on the system, which is now in dark mode. All right, and let's wrap up this video by just looking at how we can change the size of these buttons. Because in addition to adding these new button styles, we can also add a dot control size. Again, I will right click and jump to the definition of control size and we will see that control size was also introduced in iOS 15. So another really cool feature we have here, uh, which is literally just the size of each of these buttons. So I'm gonna start this one, let's do uh, dot large. And we'll click resume here and we can see that the button size is gonna get a little bit bigger. And just to highlight that quickly, let's comment out these button styles here and let's make them all bordered prominent. And then let's add a control size to all of these. So we'll add the control size here. And just to go down the list, we have large, we have dot regular, we have small, and we have mini. So a couple different ways now that we can change uh, the actual button size. The small and the mini look the same in this example, but I, I do believe that they actually change depending on the environment. Uh, I think whether or not you're in like an iPhone or an iPad, whether you're in full screen or half screen, I think the size between mini and small will change very slightly. All right, a couple other quick things that I just wanna point out before we wrap up this video. Uh, so we have these button styles, obviously. I wanna point out that on these buttons right now, I purposely set the frame to a height of 55 and a max width of infinity, and we can see here uh, where that where that frame is it's that blue box in the simulator so clearly we can see that when we set up our buttons like this and then we add the button style and the control size the control size is actually being added onto the label inside the button so it's not actually the frame of this whole button component but the label inside the button and that's why it's not going to the full frame so at face value this is not necessarily a bad thing because the control size this is kind of like Apple's way of giving us a benchmark on how big or small a button could be. So, so it's kind of nice that these have sizes by default. And they are based, again, just on the label. So if I change the label here to just say title, uh, the, the, the entire button size is going to shrink as well because it's based on the label. But we know that we can actually make buttons and customize the label as well. So we can actually do something like this where we create a button with an action and a custom label. So we'll click enter and again we don't have the action but the label right now I'll just make a text and I'll say button title just like we did for all these other ones. I'll add this button style and control size to the button so it kind of looks the exact same and I'll, I'll make this one back to button title. But when we have this custom label then we can actually add this frame onto the label. So when we do it like this, we can see now that the button style is actually adding on top of not the frame of the button, but the frame of the label inside the button. So again, here we set the frame of the button to 55 and then the button style did not, did not reflect the actual frame. Whereas here, when we move the frame inside the actual label of the button, we can then customize the button even further. So this, to me, is much more usable in an actual app because now we can really resize these buttons. Last and final thing I want to point out is that Apple also introduced a dot button border shape. So if we add button border shape and we press the period to see all these options here, 
we can see that we can change the shape from basically a capsule to a rounded rectangle. Uh, and this is kind of, again, just a convenience thing. So if we do a capsule, so if we do a capsule, it'll look sort of like this. It's got these nice rounded corners here, but we could also do a dot uh, rounded rectangle. So we have the default one with default corner radius. I guess it's about maybe five. And then we can also customize the radius if we want to do maybe 20 or something like that. And we can create the borders that way. So we can add these button styles, we can size them bigger or smaller, and we can shape the corners how exactly we want. So when we combine all of this together, especially with this label completion, we can really get some customized buttons here with, with really not that many lines of code. All right, thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.